So <clears throat> here's uh, my very first Canadian geese uh, and where where and this is where I've already started um, doing the plucking. Uh, when I was doing my research on the internet, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, a lot of contempt for this process. People say once you've done it once, you won't do it again. But I just want to cut in on mid-action. To me, it's so far no worse than um, a couple of mallards that I uh, plucked um, a couple of weeks ago when I got those. This is my very first geese, and I'm not finding plucking it any less agreeable than plucking any game bird and I intend to try and make as much make use of as much of the carcass as I possibly can keeping it as contained in the skin as much as possible during the process of um, prepping and cooking it and uh, we'll kind of see how it goes but so far I'd say so good um, and not nearly as a uh, you know, difficult as I imagine um, from the internet uh, dialogue and chat about um, processing an entire goose instead of just uh, going for uh, what seems to be the majority uh, of the, the majority, the majority's approach, uh, which is to just capture the breast simply. Um, uh, skinned off or skinless breast tissue, breast um, muscle, and uh, just eat that alone. So I'll um, cut it off here and maybe follow up a little later. Started? Yep. Okay, as I'm hand plucking this, um, this Canadian geese or goose. Um, eventually you'll find that I use, and I, you know, I'm, I'm using just some regular kitchen rubber gloves, all purpose rubber gloves. You'll find eventually your, your hands will get tacked up pretty good with feathers. And this is what I'm finding to work to get rid of them. Just simply rub your hands together. Almost as if you're washing your hands, rolling the feathers. And this pretty much gives you a fresh set of hands to go back at it. So really, you know, once again, I'm not finding plucking a duck any worse than plucking any um, game bird, including turkey. Um, and I like to try and make use of most, not all of the carcass as best as I can when I'm... Uh, um, when I'm getting quarry from the from nature, um, so yeah, thought I'd share that. Thank you. Okay, this, this is about midway or maybe eighty percent through the process. I'm just gonna um, before I finish perfecting the uh, plucking, I'm gonna dump some of these feathers. As you can see, I'm using what is commonly known of uh, as the uh, box method, where you pluck any game bird in the box to contain the feathers and kind of keep things a little neat and because uh, these feathers will stick to everything and stick around if you take a look right behind so that table that's where we plucked some um, duck feathers a couple of weeks ago and they're still stuck to my uh, outdoor furniture so I'm trying to avoid that this time So I always tell my kids, because those are the people on earth that you can tell what to do, right? Well, they should at least be uh, listening to your advice. Not many more people are inclined or obligated to do so. So I tell my kids, think into the task as much as you can. And so we started off in a box 
but now I'm in my old Weber. Uh, my rationale is that maybe I can just once to deposit these feathers in here, simply uh, start a fire in here and get rid of them. Yep. Okay. So, is this fast food? Of course not. Um, I think hunting in general in wild game is not cannot be conceived of as fast food. Fast food is what it is, and uh, this simply this simply is not fast food. Um, so, we often spend hours preparing to hunt, days in hunting blinds and on stands. Sometime coming up quarryless, gameless, nothing to uh, put on the table. So, if afterwards we have to invest a little bit of time to do the best by the quarry we are so fortunate to gain in the process why that's such a bad thing is uh, questionable to me so even when it comes to the bones in this flesh um, they can be rendered as this was a, a wild animal um, and wholly organic, whole food, the bones can be rendered uh, con conceivably into very helpful bone broth, um, stocks, soups. So wastefulness has become a staple of our modern culture and I think also this bird, the Canadian geese, suffers from um, what I will call uh, abundance bias. Simply because something is abundant and prolific, we begin to deem it. Um, we begin to deem it worthless or worth less than things that are scarce. I live in um, Michigan and grew up in Detroit, and at one time. The sturgeon, which produces caviar, was considered trash fish. It was so abundant in the river of Detroit, or the Detroit River, um, it was discarded and looked upon with contempt until it was driven almost to extinction. So I think we have to be careful when we begin to uh, deem something um, less useful, less resourceful, less edible, uh, simply because it's abundant so this is my first one and we'll you know the verdict is out on taste and what I'm able to get from it in terms of table fare but I'm hopeful and think that you know it's beginning to shape up to look like a great uh, piece of meat Well, I've satisfactorily perfected, um, for the most part, the feathering of this bird. Here we're going to probably obviously cut the, this joint off. But I'd say this bird is ready for the proverbial chopping block. And... Uh, you know, we'll chop it about there or so with the hatchet. And I'll spare you the details of that. 
but um, and we'll remove these joints in much of the same way we did here try and leave it a uh, splinter and sharp point splinter and sharp point free um, so yeah not bad and not that difficult kind of we're working on other things in the yard and kind of come back and forth to the bird um, uh oh my son says there's a buck a deer where is it, Jay, Jay, Gabriel? Yeah, right there, right there. Oh yeah, it's the like a granddaddy of them all. Monster urban buck. Probably every bit of a ten point, twelve point, maybe. Yeah, so anyway, back to our game here. Um, yeah, so I don't know how long it took me, you know. I couldn't say an hour or less, you know, because, uh, again, I've been working on it. Uh, as I've been working on other stuff in the yard, or coming back and forth to the bird. But also worth noting is that this bird was put on ice basically immediately after I retrieved it from the keel. Um, I put it in an ice chest along with the fish I caught that day. And uh, so there's less in the today. The temperature is about almost 60 degrees. A little cool, not hot for Michigan this time of year. Uh, and so, I, you know, having worked on it for maybe an hour or so, I haven't had much of a concern about um, excessive bacteria build up or anything like that because the carcass was principally um, in a refrigerated state having been in ice chest overnight. So, come on over Gabriel. It actually worked out pretty good, our feather idea. We left the feathers in there instead of doing it, continuing in the box and um, Started a fire in there, got rid of those feathers rather nicely. Now I'm just gonna singe away some of the uh, downy feathers. You noticed I left the uh, feet on. I feel like this gives me a little bit more leverage and length. Okay. And I think it keeps me a little, gives me a buffer from the fire. You don't want to cook it, of course. Now, uh, you see I left most of the neck on too. So, we'll come in here. Send some of those feathers. Just trying to send some of the downy feathers. Come over here, Gabriel. Look, look at how the feet are helping me. And the long neck that I left on. And go once again for the top area.
think that's a rather nice looking bird at this point. It's nearly commercial. I try to treat all wild game, whether it's a duck or, uh, in this case, a geese, goose, however it's said, um, as if it's like a delicacy, fine cuisine. Um, <laughs> innocent until proven guilty. Tasty until proven disgusting. Uh, yeah, with the assumption that it's going to be great tasting, you want to carefully ensure that uh, waste is minimal. That's the idea. So. And the rest is pretty much, I guess, the same as any game bird. Go up in there and pull the entrails out. People stop it there. So, like any game bird, we went in and pulled out the uh, entrails. And uh, we've got some great liver tissue here. A lot of resources here that I feel like perhaps people are overlooking. Um, nice heart. And, of course, the gizzards here, which we all plan to redeem and make use of. Also, you know, come on, this bird has been go gorging itself on corn. How bad could this meat be? It has to be, like, terrific, right? I mean, we, when, when the butcher tells you something is corn-fed or finished on corn... We expect a great product, a great meat. Why wouldn't we expect the same from this Canadian geese? So. Yep. So. With this uh, carcass. This bird. The discards. I'm going to. Uh, in my little box garden. I'm going to. Uh, compost the remains. Or the. Uh. The refuge. Uh, in this case, a geese, goose, however it's said, um, as if it's like a delicacy, fine cuisine. Um, <laughs> innocent until proven guilty. Tasty until proven disgusting. Uh, Yeah, with the assumption that it's going to be great tasting, you want to carefully ensure that uh, waste is minimal. That's the idea. So. And the rest is pretty much, I guess, the same as any game bird. Go up in there and pull the entrails out. People stop it there. So, like any game bird, we went in and pulled out the uh, entrails. And uh, we've got some great liver tissue here. A lot of resources here that I feel like perhaps people are overlooking. Um, nice heart. And, of course, the gizzards here, which we all plan to redeem and make use of. Also, you know, come on, this bird has been gor gorging itself on 
corn. How bad could this meat be? It has to be like terrific, right? I mean, we when when the butcher tells you something is corn fed or finished on corn, we expect a great product, a great meat. Why wouldn't we expect the same from this Canadian geese? So So, with this uh, carcass, this bird, the discards, I'm going to, uh, in my little box garden, I'm going to uh, compost the remains or the, uh, the refuge. And here is uh, what we were able to capture from the innards gizzard uh some liver tissue and heart bird uh which is in this case a canadian how do i say it canadian goose canadian geese in the singular i guess this canadian goose um so i've been told that freezing uh Freezing meat tenderizes it in much the same way aging meat does. So, like um, one of the first persons who were kind of tutoring me on processing meat and he tutored by video and uh, literature. I didn't ever met the man in person, but his name is Chef, uh, Chef Milo Sihelka from Michigan. Uh, he used to own the Golden Mushroom Restaurant and he was an avid hunter and um, was uh, created material to show you how to break down wild game. And I still recommend his material. Obviously, I get nothing from it, but fantastic material comes from a chef who had a, a passion for wild game and cooking. Um, World-class chef at that. So, anyway, he would also he would recommend um, aging meat by hanging it. And I've since learned that, I don't know how true it is or how they compare, that similar effect can be accomplished simply by freezing. So we're gonna freeze this bird for that reason and also because at this point, um, I'm not exactly sure how I want to proceed with it in terms of a recipe or cooking. I may do some smoking. I, with my last turkey, I actually did a, um, a, 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 uh, well, I had a process that involved smoking, searing, and then finishing in the oven. Uh, so, we're not quite sure what we want to do with it yet, so uh, hopefully it tenderizes a little bit. We're going to use this vacuum sealer. This is a bag that I actually had uh, used for venison. I like to reuse these bags. I'm, I uh, try to be as conservative and, um, and uh, resourceful as possible. So... Uh, let me see here. The way I process this bird, also I um, use recommendations that I learned on the internet in terms of how I uh, severed the joints as to not leave sh sharp bones that might um, pierce the uh, pierce the bag or the vacuum seal wrap. And so far that's working out great. Now we have a tidy package for the freezer. Thank you, Jasmine.